When users start to implement a tree in their organization, they often encounter a challenge. On the one hand, they want to use the tree to block the deployment of misconfigured resources in their Kubernetes cluster. Yet, on the other hand, they can't start blocking immediately, because doing so can delay development processes. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how most of our users tackle this challenge. Stay tuned. So when installing the tree, misconfigured resources are not blocked by default when you apply them to your cluster, but rather a warning is presented. Now for this demo, I changed this setting, and now the tree will block such a resource entirely. So let's see that in action. I try to apply this resource. And as you can see, we have a nice little output of all the rules that have failed. Uh, and as you can see, our webhook rejects this resource and it is not applied into the cluster. And now the problem is this. Chances are that most of the Kubernetes configurations that your engineering teams are currently using are full of misconfigurations. And so just going and installing the tree in enforce mode is going to stop your engineers from deploying to their clusters and it's going to prevent them from releasing features. Now, of course, we can't have that. We want to secure our clusters but we also want to keep development processes going. Our advice is to do the following. Give your engineering teams a 45 to 90 day heads up before deploying the tree in enforce mode. This will give them a chance to improve the state of their resources and also get familiar with the new policy. To make this process much easier for the engineers, we at the tree provide several solutions. Let's go over them now. So the first approach is to use the default warning mode. So let's see what happens when I apply a resource. So the tree is now warning me about misconfigurations in this resource that I'm trying to apply. And it also provides a link to the dashboard where I can see more details about them. So let's take a look. So this is the history tab of the dashboard and here I can see the output of uh, my last policy check that I performed and the rules that failed for this resource. Now this is a good way to learn about the state of your resources without needing to halt any of your operations. Another approach is to implement the tree in your CI. So this is the repo of the official the tree GitHub action. And if I go to my test repo, we can see an example of using this action on a file. So in this example, I have a file in the repo called test.yaml and I have uh, my CI set up to run the tree on every code change. And when you, once you do that, this is uh, the output that you'll get with a nice detail of all the rules that failed for this resource, just like in the CLI. Now, of course, this works for any CI platform. Finally, engineers can perform this validation locally during the development phase before they push any of their configurations to the code base. Now this is a great way for developers to get familiar with the policy that their organization wishes to enforce. So for example, uh, let's take the same file that I tried to push earlier and run the CLI directly against it. Great, so we can see that we get the same output that we saw before with a nice little detail of all the rules that failed and how to fix them. So if you want to understand how to best integrate the tree into your organization, feel free to reach out to us. You can email me directly at adar at the tree.io. And of course, I'll add this address in the description of this video as well. Thank you very much for watching and have a great one.